Hey there, Derek Rydell here, and I'm talking today about how to deal with unsupported people. You probably don't know anything about that. It's very, very rare. <laughs> well, it's simple. Get rid of them. All right, we're done. <laughs> it, that would be nice, right? So here's the thing. We are all on a path of growth. If you're watching this, you're on a path of growth. Somewhere along the line, you've said yes to your yes. You've desired more, be more, do more, have more, become more and you are starting to be activated and elevated, but not everybody in your life is on that same path. And like crabs in a bucket, even not even consciously or maliciously necessarily, they wanna pull you back down so that you can be with them. It's tribal consciousness, right? And the tribe doesn't wanna lose people from the tribe or the tribe falls apart and all the safety, the security, the support that the tribe represents is gonna fall apart, you get it? The safety in numbers thing. So it's a tribal pattern of protection that your family, your friends, etc., seem to not support you as you are growing beyond them or growing in different directions. So I want you to first understand it's not personal, it's a core principle, it's a tribal principle, and initially the tribe will try to stop you, either covertly or overtly. And so you might have some people telling you you're crazy. For my example, when I began to go down a spiritual path, first of all, just a creative path, my dad was not supportive of me. He thought I was gonna, you know, artists live below the poverty level, you can't succeed with your art, you gotta go into business, become a doctor, a lawyer, a businessman, whatever. In other words, be more like him. He meant well, he really, really did, but it was misguided. He was projecting his stuff onto me. I also believe he was projecting his unexpressed dreams onto me by if he could get me to, con to be convinced that his way was the right way, he wouldn't have to face that he was avoiding a deeper need that he had. That's a little deep, but I think you get it. But in any ways, he was doing it and he thought he was doing the best. And I had to go my own way anyway. And initially that meant I didn't get support from him. In fact, when I needed financial help, sometimes he would say, if you go to college and get a degree, I'll pay for it all. And I had to choose to say no to that support, to, to support myself temporarily. Now, as a result of that, I grew my life, I grew my work, I grew my wealth, and he eventually came around to be one of my bigger champions, and even to ask me for help and support, okay? Talk about a complete tr a flip. When I got on my spiritual path and had an awakening, pretty much everybody in my current life was not supportive. Again, they weren't being malicious. My mom thought I joined a cult. My dad didn't know what the heck I was doing. My brother thought I'd freaked out on Jesus and got a lobotomy and was no longer any fun. My sister still doesn't know why anybody would pay me for advice. <laughs> she, she, I love her dearly and she's one of my greatest supporters, but she's never read a word I've written. But so the key is that as you grow and evolve, you do have to come out from amongst them, right? And there's a thing called tall poppy syndrome where when you rise, when the poppy goes above the crop, they cut off the head. And there's a, again, there's an, an, an energy to do that so that everything is uniform, everything is controllable, manageable, and everybody feels comfortable. So that's why it's happening. But as I stu stood my, my ground, as I stuck to my path, and as I did my inner work, one by one, my family, some friends that I did lose initially, they all came back but not only did they come back and meet me, they came back at a higher level. They found their paths. They began to grow. My mom works for me now. You know, over and over, they began to evolve. As that saying from Jesus goes, if I am lifted up, I draw all unto me. So as I had the courage of my convictions, as I had the commitment to my path, it lifted others around me. A rising tide lifts all boats, but you could be that rising tide in your life, in your family, in your community, and ultimately in the world. So how you deal with unsupportive people is first of all recognizing in most cases it's not conscious, it's not malicious, it's not personal. The second thing is you might have to separate from some of them, at least temporarily. You, when, when, there's a reason why in the Bible they talk about the Christ child being taken down and taken away so that nothing could get to it and hurt it while it was fragile. Or like a new little budding flower, 
You have to sometimes have protection around it or fresh grass. You can't walk on it. So as you're slowly or, or initially emerging and standing in your truth and growing those muscles and honoring your dreams and your desires and your vision, you have to be careful, full of care. You have to be mindful. You have to protect that very soft ground, that fragile growth until it's strong enough. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. It's sometimes absolutely necessary. It may not have to be as dramatic as my life, where I pretty much pulled out of society and pulled away from everybody and became a monk, basically, to develop my internal reality, my internal strength and structures. But you might have to do it a little, maybe a little less time, a little less exposure to media and to people and to things that don't honor you, that can't meet you. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you have to find those that can meet you. You have to find those that do support you. You have to become part of groups, part of masterminds, um, have coaches or therapists or find new friends, go to new churches, synagogues, temples, events, places where people congregate, online or offline, that share your values that share your overall vision for life and for the world. You have to be intentional about that. You have to use your own agency and begin to develop relationships that nurture you, that nourish you, okay? So the first thing, recognize most people are not trying to be mean, they're just tribal. Second thing, you have to sometimes let go of some relationships or mitigate your exposure to them in the short term until you get strong enough. Third thing, you have to build new relationships. You have to find a new community. You must, it's critical. Where two or more are gathered in agreement, magic, miracles, and progress happens. You need to find people that are in agreement with you. And then finally, and this is in some cases the hardest part, in those relationships and situations where you just can't leave them, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your kids, Maybe it's your parents and they still need your help and you, you still want to be in their life. You can't just necessarily abandon all of that. If it's still triggering you, it's making you feel unloved, unseen, unmet, unsupported, and maybe even judged and criticized, you need to begin to identify those triggers and notice that those are your shadows and that actually you're in those relationships to get stronger that relationship where you feel judged as a, in a certain way. Maybe um, they, you, they think you're weird. And maybe they're not even saying it, but you feel like they think it, right? I'm weird, I'm irresponsible, I'm flighty, I'm flaky, you know, which is some of the things I felt from my dad. I had to embrace that. Or maybe I'm rebellious, I'm, I have authority problems, which I did, and it's a good thing I did because that was my own inner authority speaking. So as you notice those places you feel triggered and judged, that's showing you a place where you have a weak link. That's showing you a place where there's a part of you that you don't honor and value and appreciate. And sometimes trying to leave the relationship is actually a coping mechanism to avoid dealing with the inner relationship. So if you wanna discover what that is, notice what is the judgment you feel either about them or about yourself. Write that down, those are shadows. You can go to DerekRydell.com forward slash shadow process and then work with those shadows. I guide you through that. I have an entire program on it, but initially this will be enough to get you started. And you can begin to do that. And it's important that you do that work in the relationships that you're in that you can't just get out of because like the grain of sand that gets into the oyster, that's irritating it, that it would like nothing more than to get rid of it. It's that irritation that causes it to produce a pearl. And this is why in the Bible, when they talk about the pearl of great price, these things that irritate us, those people that drive us crazy, those people we feel criticized by, judged by, unsupported by, are often the grains of sand that are allowing us to create the jewels of our life, that are allowing us to build the strength and the muscles and the stamina and the resilience that is building a character that will allow us to live a life that is far beyond 
what we otherwise could have. So this is how you deal with unsupportive people. Don't resign, don't become codependent, don't withdraw, don't isolate. Do this practice and watch as your life and your relationships begin to flourish again. I hope this has helped you, and until next time, live authentically, love unconditionally, and follow your destiny.